Dr. Strong here with another pre-lab video. Today, I'll introduce you to the DNA Barcoding Lab. In this video, we'll review the expected learning outcomes for the lab, talk about your pre-lab assignment work, move on to a general experimental overview, and end with your post-lab assignment work. The expected skill and knowledge outcomes for this lab include proper use of pipettes, centrifuges, angelic freesis apparati, understanding of experimental design as relates to DNA extraction, PCR, gel electrophoresis, DNA sequencing, and bioinformatics, appropriate data analysis, including graphing, standard curve generation, and sequence analysis, and lastly, writing a forensic lab report. In terms of your pre-lab assignments, you should read the lab handout and DNA barcoding reference papers available on Canvas, you should read, complete, and submit your pre-lab worksheet. You should view the method videos on DNA isolation, centrifugation, PCR, gel electrophoresis, and DNA sequencing. Then you should view the protocol video, and last but not least, take the pre-lab quiz. Once all of those are completed, you'll be able to move on to the lab. Speaking of which, let's do a general experimental overview. As you can see from this figure, the DNA barcoding lab involves numerous steps and is going to span several class periods. This actually mirrors the process of scientific investigation. Rarely do scientists do a one-step-and-done experiment. Also, it's important to realize that the product of one procedure is going to be used as the starting material for the next step. As such, it's critical that you understand your protocol and that you execute each step precisely. That's the way we're going to get good results at the end. Speaking of that, or I should say with that in mind, let's go through step-by-step -step the process involved in DNA barcoding. We'll begin with sample preparation and DNA extraction. This will involve using a series of extraction buffers and centrifugation steps to bind and subsequently elute the DNA from a spin column. Once we have the total DNA isolated, we'll move on to the next step, which is a PCR application. In this step, the template, i.e. the DNA that we isolated from the prior step, will be used as a template in a polymerase chain reaction. The purpose of this step is to amplify the 648 base pair target sequence using the cytochrome C oxidase subunit 1 specific primers. We'll then subsequently analyze the results of this PCR on an agarose gel electrophoresis device and view those results on a UV trans illuminator. We'll then move on with successful PCR products being shipped to a sequencing facility. Once we get those DNA sequence results back, we'll use bioinformatic tools to analyze the data. After that, all you have left to do are your post-lab assignments, which include viewing the data analysis videos on graphing fundamentals, generating a DNA size ladder standard curve. You'll also need to read your post-lab assignments, which are in your lab handout, and last, complete and submit your assigned work. Enjoy!